All right, everyone, welcome to our Lunch and Learn. I want to um, recognize our presenters from Navy Federal Credit Union. We have Liz Kendig and Kelly Aldrich. They're going to be presenting um, information about VA loans. So I'm going to turn it over to them. And thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, like she said, my name's Liz. I am uh, on the Winchester 14, which is exclusively for West Virginia, D.C., and Delaware. So yeah. <laughs> and we kind of just want to go over VA loans because I think there's a lot of misconceptions, kind of some pitfalls people think about. They don't want to deal with VA loans. Um, so we were kind of like wondering um, if there's any like, you know, what um, issues have you guys ran into with like VA loans? If there's something in specific. Like specifically, appraisers. Like, <laughs> appraisers. Appraisers. Yeah. So, delays. When, what? what? Delays. 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 Mm -hmm. Delays because of the appraisal or just because of the VA? Like paperwork. Paperwork. Yeah. So, I think that that is kind of a common misconception. There's really not too much additional that's done with a VA loan. Um, Really we're cover it all. Yeah, I mean, we're gonna go over it, but um, you know, I think hopefully we can work out some of those or like some of the reasons why some people may not want to go with a VA loan. Um, yeah. And feel free to stop us at any time yeah. if you want clarification or anything. We'll answer whatever we can. If not, we have a team waiting yes. for us to chat them and ask them. Yes. Anything we don't know offhand. Okay. Oh, clicker. Okay, so what's a VA mortgage? It's just a mortgage that's backed by the Department of Veterans Affairs, and there are other, and all brought exclusive mortgage benefits to eligible service members, veterans, and their spouses. There are options for no down payment, so 100% financing. There's no PMI, and you can get 4% for closing costs from sellers. You can actually go a little bit above that. It is not for closing costs. So it's something, you know, they can pay off their debt. They can, um, by uh, discount points, origination fee, right, so we can go over 4%. And VA loans right now, some of the lowest rates that you can get. And the maximum loan amount is determined by the property's location and the veteran's available title. So this slide has a lot of information, so we're not Our gonna- Our manager did this? Yeah. Because <laughs> she hates us. <laughs> yeah. So we're not gonna um, read it word for word, yeah. but um, almost all service members are aware of what a VA loan is, and many are aware that they're eligible for them. And you know, active duty, they're the most likely to believe the misconceptions and not even try to get a VA loan. I know sometimes I get a loan and I'm like, you uh, are active duty, why aren't you getting a VA loan? Oh, well, uh, I'm not eligible, or it's too hard, it's going to take too long, I got to close quick, or I don't want to deal with the VA appraisal, you can't get a house appraised with VA, things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another thing about them is that they think that they can only use their VA loan once. Um, that is not the case. They can have multiple VA loans. They can even have multiple VA loans at one time. Yep. Um, it just depends on their entitlement that they have, and they may have to put down a da down payment to be able to cover some of the entitlement with their VA loan. And despite all the misconceptions and myths, uh, once they actually get a VA loan, they're like, oh, that was awesome, and they normally score a six. Uh, six or seven out of seven. Uh, so in regards to the entitlement, uh, veterans who are eligible for a VA loan have the entitlement. Um, this is the amount that the veteran borrower may have um, available to them. And entitlement helps determine how much a veteran can borrow, whether a down payment requires to another team behind you. Two easier to go this way. Um, so their basic entitlement is $36,000 um, for a loan amount above $144,000. The max entitlement is 25% of the loan amount. If the entitlement is used on an existing property and the member wants to buy another property, this is what I was just talking about with a VA loan, county loan limits will apply and a down payment may be required. But this is something that we can discuss with them. So if they're not sure, you know, nothing that you guys have to try to figure out. You can just say, hey, give Kelly or Liz a call and we will. Um, you know, figure it out for them. Um, we have a lot of calculators for that. <laughs> if the member does not have their VA entitlement in use uh, on another property, VA county loan limits do not apply. In this instance, if qualified, an FCU offers VA loans up to $2 million. 
Um, available VA entitlement is confirmed with a certificate of eligibility, which is something that we order when they do the application. So that's what we're going to kind of show you an example of now. Yeah. This is what it looks like. So you can get, they actually have a titling code which we go by, and as soon as I pull this, I know it says five. They're doing a subsequent um, fee, and less they have a down payment because it'll lower the one. Uh, we pull that as soon as we get any type of VA loan, and it shows us how much they use on prior loans. It shows us if they're exempt because if they get VA disability, they are automatically exempt from that funding fee. Mm -hmm. And it'll tell you down the bottom here too how much they get. So it's another way to confirm how much they're getting every month as well. And then you can also, you know, just for funsies, see <laughs> why they have the entitlement they have, yeah. which is always interesting to start a conversation with them and say, hey, I see your code is this. Yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions so far? Yes. Uh, so if they could have multiple VA loans, I always thought it had to be their primary residence. It does. But if they have one and they're turning it into an investment property, uh -huh. it stays behind and they do the new one forward. They just have to move. Okay. So yeah. they can't buy, they can't. Have two primaries now. Well, right. Well, they can't buy an investment. <laughs> oh, that's right. They can't okay. go that way. They can't okay. do the other way. They can turn an old VA loan, a home they purchased with a VA loan, into an investment and right. then move into a primary, but they just can't do it the other way. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Is there a requirement for how long they have to have a home in the primary home? I don't believe so. No, I don't believe so. We got both of them like that. Yeah, there's always new requirements. And they could also buy a second home. Like, with the. Can't they buy a second home with the two? I don't think so. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it has to be their primary. I mean, I'm sorry. I misunderstood. No, I meant they can use their first home as their second home. It doesn't have to be an investment, is what I was saying. So the current loan has to be their primary, yeah. but the past loan can either be an investment or a second home. Sorry, that's what I meant. <laughs> okay, and the, this is the current VA funding fee chart. I'm sure you guys are all well aware of the rumor that's coming out that it is going to be lowered. We haven't gotten any concrete information yet, but we are really hopeful it'll be a lot lower. <laughs> yeah, in the next couple of months, hopefully. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the common things that uh, our members will say, well, I don't want to pay that fee. That fee is ridiculous. And you can see how uh, as the down payment goes up, the fee goes down. And um, of course, if they're the, like she said before with the disability, they don't have to pay a funding fee. They can actually pay the funding fee up front um, instead of putting it into the mortgage, but um, they also can finance it as well. Yeah. And it's calculated based on the loan amount. Yeah. Just in case anyone else didn't know that part. Okay, so this is how you are able to be eligible for a VA loan. You have to be active duty or on the discharge. That is not a consecutive days of active service time during wartime or 181 days of active service during peacetime. If they're in the National Guard or Southern Reserve, they need six years. Six years. And that's, that's one of the times when people will be like, oh yeah, I'm eligible, I'm in the reserves. And then they've been there for like a month and I'm like, oh. Yeah, I don't have a lot of that. I gotta give bad news right yeah. now. <laughs> um, or it could be the spouse of a service member who has died in active duty or from a service-connected disability. And there's a few other restrictions when it comes to a surviving spouse that we have to take care of because they can't get remarried. Yeah, if they get remarried, then it takes that. They can have a boyfriend. <laughs> 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 Just let it sit. Long term's worth it. Yeah. Um, and so, and this is also something that you know you guys don't have to try to figure out. You know, they just call us, and we could pretty quickly um, determine. determine, yeah, if they're eligible for the VA loan. <laughs> so these are some considerations when we're talking about VA loans. So borrower and co-borrower must be married or both must be eligible veterans. So you can't um, have your girlfriend or your boyfriend on your VA loan. They have to be your spouse um, unless they are also a veteran. Mm -hmm. And then it would be either we would be using the dual entitlement. Um, we do count child care expenses as a liability to debt with a VA loan. Um, so sometimes that could cause, you know, an issue with the debt to income. Um, but if like a family member watches the children or they have like a letter like saying that, you know, this, my child is cared for for free or like a stay at home, you know, then that's fine. Then we go with that. We, you know, they don't have to 
prove. <laughs> um, VA loans have closing costs even if 100% financing. So that's a common misconception. They still have to pay closing costs. You know, there's a lot of third party fees. There's nothing, you know, they can't roll it, yeah, into the, uh, the mortgage. Um, except for the funding fee, of course, which we already talked about. Um, we do pull CAVERS, which is the Credit Alert Verification Reporting System. Um, to see if they've had any defaults, delinquencies, foreclosures related to any type of federal debts. Because if they do, then they don't, they won't back the mortgage. Um, I think there are some things that can be done. Yeah. Um, like they can contact them and try to work those issues out, and then maybe we can proceed from there. Um, so with inspections, we require, or the VA requires a termite inspection, uh, an appraisal inspection, and a final inspection. Um, so with the appraisal, uh, they may have required repairs. Um, and so those would then require a final inspection, but otherwise the final inspection wouldn't be, if the appraisal goes through, everything's fine, no repairs, we don't need the final inspection. Yeah. Um, in community property states, there is 10, but West Virginia is not one. Um, the spouse's liabilities must be added to the qualifying monthly debt and a joint credit report must be pulled. So we don't consider the credit score, but any debts that they have, that basically the veteran would have to be able to cover those debts as well. Yeah, it's a delicate situation. Yeah. Especially if they're separated. Right. <laughs> uh, so two things, um, or since the borrower and co-borrower must be married. Now, I was just informed last week I was able to get a prequal from someone that allowed a fiance and said that if they are engaged to be married, that they were able to go on the VA loan. Would they have a certificate by the time of closing? Yes. <laughs> yeah, well, that's a no. It's yeah, that's get a no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and I told them I said, uh, you know, I've never heard of that. And they said, no, we were able to do it. So, uh, you know, I put some check ins on that. but. Last year, uh, there was an announcement from VA and from multiple states, and West Virginia was on the list, that also termite inspections were no longer required. And West Virginia was on that list. There were several states, but the VA hasn't rolled any of that info out to a few states. So like South Carolina and Georgia already stopped them. They were all released at the same date, um, but for some reason, West Virginia hasn't started that, nor Virginia. Um, but this was all printed, it was all put out last year. Yeah. Where's the disconnect come from things that you see come out on the news and that other states approved and followed suit with VA dropping something and it had our states listed as another one that would do that, but it doesn't happen. I've asked the same question because if you actually go on the VA website and check by the regions, West Virginia is one of the states that says it has no local restrictions. Yeah. which would be a termite inspection. But on our end, when we go into our procedures, maybe federal still has it as required. And, and that's what I was thinking, that it's the lending institution itself, because the state was not requiring it anymore, but the lending institutions are not following suit because that's just, they haven't changed the, the <laughs> way they do there, it. It might yeah. be, yeah, because yeah. what I was going to say is a lot of times, when anytime there's a change made within the financial, like how we do any type of procedure, it has to go through like our legal team, it has to, it has, there's so many hoops that have to go through before the change is made, so that could just be part of it. Um, I mean, not that that's a helpful answer, obviously, <laughs> but um, that could be part of it. I thought you were going to bring up about... Uh, how the buyer can pay for it now. Yeah, the buyer can pay for the turnaround inspection now. Yeah. It doesn't have to be the no, seller. No, in mm -hmm. fact, that we weren't supposed to even have to do them at all. You know, yeah. and so many lending companies don't even know about it. They're like, what are you talking about? I was like, look, this passed. This happened mm -hmm. last year. I mean, why aren't you guys getting with the program? Mm -hmm. And he's like, ah, it's a corporate thing, you know? Yeah. And it's like, I know, but it was a law. It passed. It's no longer a requirement. Why can't they just, you know? We can bring this to our management yeah. as well. We can always, you know, give, if you give us your card, we can always let you know, like any updates on that. Mm -hmm. appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. I know they do have a chart that the VA puts out that says which areas are more likely to have termites. So yeah. that might also be why it has included a little I'm sure in West Virginia, some of these areas are probably high infestation rates just based on the type of property. But I would not think so. Like where, where the woods are and everything? Where they come from? <laughs> 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 termites 
more in a beachy area than you do the woods from that high humidity. Yeah. You know, so like, um, yeah. Yeah, look at the chart. I've actually done it. Yeah, like Georgia, where I'm from. If you in your required inspection that doesn't mention well, do you require a well test? No, that's yeah. something we hear all the time, sewer yeah. well. Only if it comes in on the contract, mm -hmm. like the seller already knows there's something wrong, so they're just throwing it in there. Or if the appraiser comes in and does the appraisal and says, oh, this needs to be checked, then yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. But just right off the bat, no. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else? So some things can get brought up because of the appraisal. Yeah. So that's the, that's the only thing. So there could be additional later on. Appraisals. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to do something? Yeah. So this is always a fun one. This is one where everyone's like, oh, VA appraisals. Uh, actually, in my experience so far, VA appraisals are quicker turnarounds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another thing just to point out. <laughs> I do just want to point out something about West Virginia appraisals. Yeah, well, West Virginia, yeah. We have had. Uh, a significant delay. I mean, it's gotten better, yeah. but we've had significant delays with appraisers in West Virginia. So we use, you know, like a third party blind system. Mm -hmm. it, it, it assigns the appraiser, that way it's a fair to everyone involved. Yeah. Um, so we don't really have any control over that, but over the last year or so, it's gotten better, like I said, but I mean, there were some areas where it would take a month and a half to even get an appraiser out there. Yeah, we have different life experiences. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had one in 48 hours just well, yesterday. So also, I remember, we do the whole state of West Virginia. Yeah. So, where we're seeing this may be more like different areas or the rural areas of West Virginia. I have had really good experiences here yeah. in this yeah. area. So, uh, I actually have now, yes, I haven't had a lot of problems here. But, but some of those increases are kind of right now, too. Yeah. So they're quick to sign yeah. themselves. And and we can talk to VA appraisers, we can't talk to the clinician. <laughs> so we can kind of uh, call them and be like, hey, what's going on? Yeah. Can we uh, speak this up? Uh, so appraisals are mandatory, and we also need the VA addendum, which I know someone was talking about paperwork. Mm -hmm. That's technically the only extra paperwork we require from you. And we can send you a blank copy if you don't have it, you get it signed, send it back to us, but we cannot order the appraisal until we have it. And they have to be done by a VA certified appraiser. It has two purposes fair market value and ensure it meets the minimum property requirements. So the buyers do pay for that appraisal fee up front. That's usually something they do not like. And the appraiser, they just ensure that the homes are safe, structurally sound, and sanitary. And sometimes I've even questioned after I've seen the appraisal, I'm like, well, they didn't get that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if appraisal requires repairs to bring home up to NPR standards, they can be completed before the loan. Uh, they have to be completed before it's cleared to close. So, when it gets to the standards, who decides the standards? Do you guys, do your underwriters or appraisal review have any put back in anything that they put in as a rule of their appraiser? They check it, they review it once it comes in from the appraisers, but they don't say, hey, this needs to be taken off or this needs to be put on, nothing like that. Mm -hmm. It's all up to the appraiser. Yeah. Um, so this is, of course, uh, something that comes up with VA loans. I'm not really sure how much you've dealt with this because sometimes you reach out to a realtor and they have not heard of this before. Yeah. Um, but Tidewater Initiative mm -hmm. is invoked when an appraiser determines the value of a property to be less than the property contract purchase price. The veteran must agree that additional comparable sales be, pro be provided to the appraiser or they cannot be used. Uh, within two days of Tidewater being invoked, the realtor may provide recent sold comparables on the comparable sales grid provided by the processor and notification email. So basically, we'll reach out to you and say, you know, the appraiser has uh, invoked Tidewater and... Um, we need comparables. Yeah, we need comparables. And I usually reach out to the listing agent and the selling agent because why not get everybody in on this? If you want to call yeah. us, let's get it done. <laughs> yeah. And we've actually had really good success with this. Yeah. This is definitely not a... Uh, like a, a hard stop. Yeah. Um, I I don't even think I've had one where we didn't work something out. Either they lowered the price or the appraiser, um, actually the appraiser up the price. I mean up the um, the value. So, but once received, the comparables are submitted to the appraiser by the processor and loan officer. But so by the federal, if no comparables are submitted, the appraisal will finalize. 
finalize the report as is. Yeah, we have to have it in 48 hours. Yes. Like, there's no limit after that. Mm -hmm. They just say as is and they're done. Mm -hmm. yep. Reconsideration of value can only be requested by the veteran. The processor or loan officer may provide the veteran with the specific requirements needed to submit to the VA. I've had that personally happen. <laughs> Question for you. So I've had several tide waters when, you know, I represent a bill where when the market jumped up like crazy, I mean, I had tide water invoked like five times uh, 2021. <laughs> so, um, and one was even on a resale. So um, now, I had all of those adjusted by the appraiser with comps, um, but then there was one that was a resale, and this was with a local company using a VA. So my question is gonna be, if the appraiser does not raise the value, does Navy Federal allow the loan processors and their underwriting team to give an adjustment in value because they still feel that the appraiser was wrong? Because I did have that happen, and the loan company gave more value when the appraiser would not. And we all came to a settlement. So it's just good information for us to know yeah, no, how easy it is to work with maybe federal in this kind of circumstance. Well, we would go to the next step. Like, if they, if you did tie water and the appraiser's like, no, I'm not changing it, yeah. and you know for sure it should be higher, and then it goes straight to the VA. It goes over their head, and then their boss or whoever is in charge of them is going to look at it and say, hey, is this right or not? Okay, so that must be what happened, yeah. that they just went right over their head. Yep. Okay. And every time I've done it, uh, they're used to the appraiser. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty arrogant appraiser. Yes. We're all used to that. Yeah. You know, but, um, okay. So once they assign value and say, you know, we have to do an agreement and the value of the property, how long does that value stay with that property for any future VA buyer? <clears throat> oh, how long? Aren't they good for 120 days? Six, I think, yeah, yeah I think it's six months. Yeah, six yeah. months. Okay. Yeah. We never have to deal with it after the fact. We have, <laughs> <laughs> we have had to deal with transfer. Yeah. Which is a hot mess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like where someone's coming from another bank, another lender, they don't want to deal with them anymore, they come to us, and then I have to just call mm -hmm. like 18 times a day to get that other one through to agree with transfer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they don't like to do that. Yeah, because once it's on that on that loan or on that property, yeah, it's stuck there for a while. Uh, so we just kind of wanted to go over some of the benefits of a Navy Federal VA mortgage. Um, so we are a top five VA lender. Um, we do offer rate match. So if uh, the members can provide us with a loan estimate, has to be an official loan estimate from another lender, then we will submit it for rate match. Um, and I think we get that within 24 hours. Usually it's within 20 minutes, yeah. but <laughs> we probably doesn't have that much to do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do service uh, the mortgage for the life, so they would always call Navy Federal if they had any issues with their, you know, their payments or anything of that nature. Um, the competitive rates, kind of back to the rate match. Um, but you know, we watch those rates. We watch the rates of all the other financial institutions, and we're very competitive with the VA rates. Um, we can close in 30 days. Um, I know that there's been common, <laughs> uh, or something common we hear is that Navy Federal can't close in 30 days. Um, that is an issue that when you know the housing, when the housing went crazy, like in 2020, 25. <laughs> yeah, it did. There was some delays with closing, but we are definitely at closing in 30 days, sometimes even sooner if we need to, depending on you know how quickly we can get all the documentation and everything. Yeah. Um, we are, as loan officers, available on the weekends. Uh, of course, there may be delayed response as it is a weekend if we're not at home, but we do have an 800 number that you can also call that we have weekend coverage. Um, but we have cell phones, you can call us, you can text us, um, and we can you know give you pre-approval letters, um, you know answer any questions. We're more than happy to talk to seller realtors. You know, sometimes they just want to know. Yeah, um, I just want to hear that confirmation that I'm going to be a terrible buyer. <laughs> right. Um, we are starting to um, offer verified pre-approvals now. Um, so that is uh, a big deal. A lot of people like that. So that's also something that we can help with. Um, we do in-house processing and underwriting. And we have low lender fees.
What's the 800 number that you can call on the weekends? I personally have never had luck reaching the one office oh, on the weekend. I will give that to you. Mm -hmm. well, we're, we're thinking about giving everybody's cards. Yeah, we'd like to. have a, a gift to give out, kind of like as a door prize. Yeah. So we get everybody's cards and shuffle them off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then we can always send like a. <laughs>